yeah, these are definitely the good old days. CCD was almost in the same format or template as actual element, like your temporary schooling. So you had your kindergarten, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, seventh, eighth. I think we went up all the way to eighth grade, right? We didn't have high school classes, did we? No, we didn't. Not at the time. So uh -huh. for my K-5 class, I had uh, Sister Catherine. She was my CCD teacher. And, you know, the things we did were on a very elementary level. She wanted to make sure we understood the Bible, the, the creation story, you know, stuff like that. The older you get, the more complex and deeper it gets. I had Mrs. Whitner for like t two years because I think that's when what teachers were getting low. Mm -hmm. So I had her for like a fifth and sixth grade year. And then I had good old Deacon James <laughs> gave him all sorts of troubles. Don't believe her. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, but um, with him, I think he was the last ECD teacher I had. Yeah. And in that class, it got really complex. We talked about, you know, different theories, different um, understandings, different yeah. opinions, facts. Sure. Got into what the catechism and, and the Catholic Church, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Deacon, did yes. you expose um, the African American students to um, pictures of, of statues and um, saints, angels, and yes, that, was that looked like them? Yes, particularly uh, we had a dress up day at one time where the students would actually dress up as their favorite saint. That was an old school. And so we tried to imitate them, how important vocations for us, and not only that, but evangelization. But you look at this beautiful school here that's a, a, a beautiful New rendition fresh. of what evangelization is all about. This is evangelization in itself. You know, how we sacrifice from this little portable building here and the... The portable right over there. there. Yeah, the exactly. The parking lot was not always this big. It was maybe half this size. Exactly. But now we have this beautiful school and we hope that it will continue for many, many years, handing on the baton, the education, Catholicism, on to the next generation. attended St. Joseph's Catholic School here in Greenville, South Carolina, and I was literally one of three, including the middle and high school students who were African American. So my lifestyle was different. I had to adapt. I had to um, learn new things about myself and my new environment that bettered me in the moment. It I felt like it was breaking me, but I mean, as an adult, I realized it made me a better person. Um, so within that, like I said, I, I what was loved. that experience like? Did you feel like mm -hmm. you were the black girl? Or? I was the black girl. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was the black girl. I didn't really have a lot of friends. Mm -hmm. I was isolated. I didn't. My grandma thinks I did because every time I had a party, people came. But my my lifestyle in actual school from 8:30 to 3:30 was completely different. Um, they really didn't. I don't. I don't want to say they didn't like me. I guess they couldn't really relate to me because. I didn't look like them. I didn't have the same house as they had, the same cars. I didn't play on CESA soccer, you know, like that that wasn't that wasn't my lifestyle. So I guess they felt like they didn't have a lot to relate to me. So I was isolated a lot. I was segregated a lot. I was bullied a little. Um, Let me ask you a question. When you noticed um, economic, dis did you notice economic disparity? Oh, absolutely. You, call that? You, you can't help but see it. When you, how were you then? I was what in the sixth grade. Sixth I mean, grade. Straight out of elementary school. So maybe was that 12, 12? Yeah, right. 12 going mm -hmm. on 13. 12 yeah. going on 13. And then that's when you realized that economic disparities existed. Oh, yeah. I didn't realize that in, in elementary school. How did that make you feel? It made me feel less than. It made me, it made me feel like I wasn't good enough at one point. Um, for something that wasn't my fault. I was just I was just born, you know, into this earth and in my life I thought my family was great. Everything we had was good enough. We lived a good life. We traveled, we ate good food, we we had great conversation, we did things. So I didn't see anything wrong with it. Until you saw how and, the other half lived. Yeah. Deacon, mm -hmm. did you prepare them for that? Somewhat, but mostly it was centered around uh, your Catholic education. Uh, getting a good 
foundation, a solid foundation in, in your faith, and then being that light to go out into the world and to make that change. So part of that was instilled from the family because that's where uh, your faith begins, within the family. And it's from there, it's from the church to the school, after mass, out into the world to be that light that's so important. Parents are the first educators. Exactly. First teachers, yes, all of that. And you taught the parents. Some of them. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd just like to make one comment in, in terms of, of Bree. You can see the expression on her face that even though those were bitter little trials there, but look at her now. There's a big difference. And God is working in her life. I know he is. Amen. Amen. You get to take your struggle and turn into what a blessing. There you go. All right. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Okay. That was very good. Bree, I have something I'd like to share with you. What is that? Who are these wonderful people on this photo? Let's see. Oh, wow. That is a throwback picture. That literally was 14 years ago. Wow. Can you identify any <laughs> yeah, of them? Yeah, this, if you want to look at it, this is Kelsey Wright. This is a young lady named Grace. I don't remember her last name. Collie. This is her brother. I think his name is Matthew. This is Rasmus Baker. And this is Tamila. Very good. Yeah. Are you in communications with any of them now? <clears throat> oh yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me, via Facebook. Good. Kelsey graduated from undergrad with her bachelor's. Rasmund just graduated from USC with her bachelor's. She's going to medical school. And Tamaya is doing well. She has a baby now Very and just working, taking care of her kids. Very good. Kali is in the military. Great. So now, how did you feel back then uh, singing uh, doing, I think every third Sunday, you guys mm -hmm. sang every fourth the, Sunday. Fourth Sunday, the junior choir <clears throat> of Padua. How did you feel in delivering that prayer? Because really, singing is a prayer to the congregation. Every well, that was our ministry as good. little people. That was what we were good at. Good. We were really good at it. So it was very powerful because we know we sound good, we look good, we were uniform and full with our piano director. She always made sure we were in line. Right. So when we sang, we we felt the power that we had. Good. You know, like when you when you can unify mm -hmm. with a group of people and you all are on one accord and sound is one. Yeah. And I think it, you guys did a tape, didn't you? We did. We had a couple CDs. Very good. Sold them. I think that they were successful. Very good. Yeah, but we Miss Anna and Brenda, Brenda Wakefield, they right. always kept us busy. Yeah. Always kept us busy. We went to trip from Care to Carowinds. We've gone to battle of the bands. Right. And you were also an alkalite, an altar server. I was. Very good. I was an altar server. Part of the evangelization here at the church. How did it feel every fourth Sunday coming in to sing and uh, delivering that message of singing to both black and white? I just words. felt important. Very good. It gave me a, a sense of importance because I knew what I was doing, everyone was going to hear me. Mm -hmm and in the group with everyone else that, that right. I was with and I knew we were gonna rock the house. Very. I know a lot of Sundays you come to church and all we had to hear was the junior voices of Padua singing. And everyone gets so and excited. everyone just, you know, <laughs> they were elated, you know. And, and they, they did, I think you did some changing of souls, you know. You came in kind of down, but when you left, you guys sing. Everybody would gather around here in the back and you know, you guys yeah. would do an, an something extra, and it just lifted the the uh, congregation up. And so uh, I miss that. I miss it. We have it, but it's not as great as what you guys. And do. we love to do it. It was fun yeah. for us. Yeah. Like it. Like you can literally tell that we were called to be mm -hmm. here because right. we, we we naturally came. We right. begged our parents to take us to choir practice, exactly. and our parents knew it was important to us. So they would make sure we did our homework. We right. had dinner, and then you go to choir practice. Exactly. In that order. The sacraments are an important role in Catholicism. The main one is Holy Eucharist. Um, and of course, out of that, all of the other sacraments flow from that. The sacrament of the Eucharist nourishes us throughout our day so that when we hear the word, the deacon dismisses us to go in peace. We are fed with the body and blood of Christ and we're ready to go out and to change the world. And the comparison of what we see today as compared to yesterday 
or back when Catholics were uh, not allowed in certain sections of Greenville, particularly in St. Mary's where you had to sit in the back, uh, I wonder to myself sometimes, how could they be nourished to go out and make a change with that uh, on their minds? And so uh, today the church has changed tremendously here at St. Anthony's. We have an overflow of, of Caucasians here integrated with the black African spirituality and preaching. And so we see this Sunday after Sunday and something is happening. Something is going on here. We hear it in the news from our announcements. When we have visitors, they are elated. The spirituality that this sanctuary holds each Sunday and at mass. And so with that, we're grateful. We're very grateful and thankful. Bree, you were an altar server, also a lecturer and many other capacities you served within the church. Could you share some of those with us? Yeah, like you said before, I was, um, well, starting back there, I was on the choir. There you go. I was an altar server. I was an elector. I, I think I did a couple um, youth groups. Very good. Did youth you groups. Yes, yeah, I remember. Yeah, leader. Done multiple seminars. I facilitated. Very good. I've done a lot. I did, actually, one year when I was younger, I did vacation Bible school. Yeah. The Vacation Bible School with Miss Gordine and Mary Esther Gordine, and yeah, so Very good. I've done a and lot. I've also <laughs> been a part of the National Black Catholic Congress Conference, where I was chosen by my church to go be a re to be a representative for young millennials in the Black Church and to have a voice on how we feel we can bring back uh, bring back more Black millennials back to the church. Very good. That's a very interesting organization because. It's there we get blacks from all over across the United States. They meet in certain parts of the United States to discuss racial issues, social injustice, etc. And we have very important meetings, workshops, in which we gather out into those workshops, participate. Then we bring that information back to our parishes and synthesize it within different groups and ministries within the church. So I'm very well uh, pleased to be a part of that movement also within the Catholic Church. As a deacon, we also have international uh, deacon conferences. Unfortunately, this year I was unable to attend the deacons conference in Rome with our Holy Father, but hopefully uh, later on I'll be able to do that.